Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we have a story of a man who did this when he found out his wife has been cheating on him with another man. Here is the full story with 6 updates. D-Day was 6 months ago and for the most part reconciliation has been going great. WS has been doing everything right but I don't see myself staying much longer. The love is there. The attraction is there. The friendship, the laughter, and the joy. It's all there. Everything I need day to day is there but one thing. The one thing I took for granted for so long. Bliss. I don't know if I'll be happier staying or leaving. I want this family to stay together but I feel a part of myself dying. And I know if this dread doesn't die first, it'll only get worse. There's a pit in my stomach that is full of doubt and fear. Even on the best days, my nights are spent tossing in bed to terrible nightmares. They're less now but there has not been a single night where I didn't wake up frightened. For over 10 years there was no doubt, no fear, and no thought of infidelity. But for the last 6 months, these are all common. I'm emotionally exhausted and my hope is draining. But my fear of leaving has me stuck, as if I'm in quicksand, knowing the more I struggle, the faster I sink. Is that how you survive reconciliation? My therapist tells me to believe what I see, what I hear, and what I physically feel. Everything else is immaterial and should not be trusted. I shouldn't let fear consume me. I wish it was that easy. Emotions work both ways and I'm unable to turn off the fear and doubt without also closing off the hope and faith. I've been indecisive the last few weeks and I'm a wreck because of it. I'm not sleeping well and I don't have much energy during the day, so I find myself falling into cynical cycle, maybe even depression. Two months ago, I thought I was done with reconciliation but then I woke up fully refreshed and recommitted to it. WW and I wrapped up the summer with a lot of great memories and healing. But now that life is getting back into a routine, I find myself struggling. Triggers are coming back harder than ever and I find myself angrier than before. Half the day, I'm thinking about divorce or revenge affairs whereas the other half I'm trying to convince myself to work things out. I worry I'm committed because of sunk cost fallacy or fear of being alone. My WW has been doing everything right, we're both and I see and will start back with MC next week. But I'm on a plateau fighting this pressure to run, and I'm exhausted. I've tried most of the suggestions you listed. One of the first realizations I made was that our old relationship was dead and we had to create a new one. Part of that was to recreate myself, separate of the old relationship, so I did. Gym, nutrition, routine, and even my job was all jump-started with new goals and motivations. You're right about my future being equally challenging regardless of what I choose to do. And that's something both my therapist and WS has told me repeatedly. Even to the point where I feel like they're challenging me, more so my trauma response to pressure. Either way, that doesn't concern me, nor does it worry me if I were to leave. Staying with someone who already had an affair shows me their character and what they're capable of doing. A new partner could also be capable of that but they might have the same character I do, and from this experience I'll be better prepared to prevent it or identifying it being a realistic risk. Either way I'd have more control over the situation as I do now, especially reliving the trauma daily with triggers and nightmares. I know how to love and protect myself now, and although I took a hit to my self-esteem and self-worth, that's largely dependent with who I'm interacting with. You're probably right. I'm not ready for MC but I've hit a plateau, and I feel that if I don't move the dial soon, I'll walk. I want to leave but I can't. I can't leave my children and I can't but feel guilty for even thinking about leaving. I know that this is from emotional manipulation, from my own childhood fear of abandonment, and my desire to beat the odds. We're eight months past D-Day and I stay because of faith and hope, but my WS stole that from me so why do I still believe in it? I'll fantasize about a life away from her, but then feel guilty. Every morning I wake up angry and sad, so I spend the entire day trying to cheer myself up only to repeat the same efforts the following day. I'm so exhausted I don't know what to do. D-Day anniversary is coming up and I still wake up in different mindsets where on morning I'm committed to reconciliation, and others I just want to run. I'm sure this is normal but it's hard to shake, and I feel like it ruins entire days, if not wastes a lot of time. My WS has been awesome lately, but I woke up today just wanting a divorce, just wanting to seek a new adventure, away from this horrible pain. Normally this stems from my dreams and I know this, so I try to block it out, move on, and find happiness in the now. Other days, like today, I just want to stew in the misery, and validate my fears with a fantasy outside of my reality. 
almost a year since D-Day and it's been objectively great. WW has done everything I've asked and has been a model spouse. We're communicating well, sex life is better than ever, and there's nothing indicating she's not 100% committed towards staying loyal. We're both in therapy and have holistically become better people, individually, and as partners. All to say that I know in my heart that I can't continue this farce. There has not been a single night where I didn't wake up to at least one bad dream, and there hasn't been a day where I haven't been plagued with intrusive thoughts. I fight through the doubt, the fear, the demons, and the anger every day for myself and my family but it's endless. My subconscious mind resets itself every day, and I wake up starting the fight anew. Sure, it's getting easier as the dreams aren't as bad, the thoughts don't linger as long, and the tears don't come as easily but I'm exhausted. The hysterical bonding phase has run its course and the resentment is seeping in. I'm constantly drifting off into some daydream where I'm single and exploring a new city alone with an exciting new woman in my life, showering me with affection and attention without having had betrayed me. I long for a relationship built on mutual respect and love, not circumstance and logic. There has to be someone out there that can love me for being me and who would die rather than betray me. Who can communicate her desires and fight along aside me. Not against me because she's insecure or immature. Someone who's intelligent enough to figure out solutions but brave enough to not need all the answers. A kind soul who wants peace but with a fiery heart who will defend it. I love my wife and I truly enjoy the life we currently have. I wish I could swipe my memory of her affair and I wish I could spend my life with her, raising our children. Growing old in laughter and happiness as we look back to all the beauty we shared in creating over the decades. I wish I could be happy with her without so much pain attached to me. I didn't deserve to be cheated on. I didn't deserve to be betrayed and disrespected as if I meant nothing. As if I wasn't strong enough to help her through her fears. Or as if I wasn't man enough for her. I can't though. There is no future where we stay together and I respect myself. Where I can hold my head high without doubt or fear sucking me down into despair. I'll never know the totality of her actions, if this truly was the first time or if the actions she described occurred as told. The triggers will lessen and new memories will overlap the bad ones, but the body will remember and her actions will corrupt my dreams for as long as she lays next to me. No matter how many nights I fall asleep in her arms, no matter how many kisses, surprise gifts, or words of endearment, there will be rot that festers. I'm not leaving today and I won't leave tomorrow, but that date is coming and I'll eventually be strong enough to start my new life. I'm honestly not sure what the motivation for reconciliation is for her, but I have a year's worth of effort that tells me she's remorseful and truly wants to fix the broken parts within herself. I cannot deny the improvements she's made but it's not enough for me. It can't undo what's already happened. Is it selfish for her to attempt reconciliation? I don't think so. I could say it's selfish of me to keep her roped along while I make up my mind, especially now when I'm certain I'll be leaving. Some would say I'm entitled to that and she's at my mercy for what she did. But who's to judge? My goal isn't to make it even, or for either one of us to suffer. I just want peace. I'll be tied to her for the rest of my life due to our children so I want her at her best, for them. Got that sweet feeling of relief and felt empowered after telling my WW. But damn her tears and seeing her in distress almost broke me. Almost a week later and she's still in denial begging me for one more chance. The thing is, she did everything I asked for, everything I thought I needed. But a week ago I journaled for the first time in over a year. I wrote 20 pages front to back resolved to be completely honest with myself. I don't want to spend my life with someone who took me for granted. Someone weak and selfish enough to betray me. Someone who couldn't communicate or support me through their own arrogance and denial someone who put themselves before their family and corrupted themselves for something so meaningless. There's no healing for me when the person who broke me was constantly around. So here I am. OP, do what feels right for yourself, and no one can say you didn't make an effort. One of the principles of reconciliation is that if for any reason, the betrayed partner cannot carry on with the relationship, they should strive to facilitate an amicable end. She seems to be disregarding that principle. She must acknowledge her role in all of this and recognize that infidelity often marks the end of a relationship. Regardless of any present efforts to make things right, the fact remains that mistakes were made in the past. And it's challenging to accept that in a relationship, you may want to communicate the aforementioned reconciliation guideline to her. If she genuinely cared for you, she wouldn't wish to keep causing you pain. Good luck and stay strong. I, 32 male, discovered that my wife, 29 female, cheated on me with another woman. We would celebrate 15 years since we met this year and we have two kids together, female 5 and 3. 
We started dating at a very young age. I was 18 and she was 14. At start everything happened very fast and we were true lovers. She was very insecure and would yell at me for almost any interaction I'd have with another woman. When this started I was already too committed to the relationship to understand how abusive this was and that I should have just let her go. As the years passed, she changed and wouldn't be so mad for that. I thought everything was fine, but I always felt that I was much more committed to our relationship than she. Fast forward, we married and had two kids together. We had very similar views about the world, politics, and how we would like to raise our children. So everything appeared to be fine to me. We had very different views on how we enjoy life though. I am much more an introvert type that likes just sitting down and having meaningful conversations about life, spirituality, philosophy, and things alike. She's much more adventurous, likes to travel, meet new places, do more dangerous stuff like parachuting. I think we were too young to know what we actually wanted of life when we started. And having two kids, plus the pandemic, we didn't have any time for ourselves anymore. So whenever a free time would show up, we ended up doing things alone, instead of doing something together. I ended up addicted to video games, and would spend a lot of time on screens. And she went on with her gym and more adventurous lifestyle. So our relationship was in a very bad shape. But I thought it was something temporary, that we would eventually fix it as we always did. About a week ago I discovered she cheated on me with another woman, something I never imagined she would be capable of. And she says she has emotions on that other relationship, so she's not quitting it for me, even though I was willing to try again and forgive her for her infidelity. We decided on divorce this week, but we still have so much to figure out about it. We have a home, kids, car, dogs. It seems everything is so overwhelming right now. I feel like crap, and she's there finding support on her new thing. We had such great affinity that she was my only support point in life. We both have a lot of divergences with our families, so we always found comfort on each other. Now I feel like I have nothing. How can someone I trusted that much do that to me? How can I truly recover from this so I'm not traumatized for future relationships? How I stop feeling like crap? My self-esteem is completely gone. I feel like I will never find someone again and I was lucky to have her. I also feel like she was toxic with me and she contributed a lot for me to be in this crappy state of mind. I just want to move on and learn to live by myself, but it feels so difficult right now. I don't want to be a depressive person. I don't cry as often today, but still cry when I think about my kids. I didn't want them to go through this and having to grow up with divorced parents. Any advice or kind words are welcome. I just want to feel joy in life again. I am trying to survive a breakup of a relationship that lasted over 14 years. We have two kids, and when I'm with my kids, I always have something to do, so time flies by. But what do I do on weekends when I am alone? I even downloaded Tinder, but I am not really in the mood to text, date other women right now. I imagine laying in bed for the whole weekend is not healthy though. Will time heal this? Is it just a matter of waiting? Or should I force myself into dates? I am heartbroken, feeling guilty, feeling I hit the bad lottery in life. 14 years relationship, two kids, comfy home, good financial situation. She's valuing an affair over everything we had. But those 14 years were not butter smooth. She had her secrets. She lied to me before for smaller things. And she always felt me feel like I was guilty of it. Oh gosh I love my kids so much, but in all honesty, never ever ignore a red flag like your partner lying to you, and feeling no remorse for whatever reason. Now I will be a single parent. I will go back to renting a place. I won't see my kids every day. I will have to pay so she still has a way to support our kids. And I will have to discuss my kids life with someone that have not the same moral values as I do. Please, do your future self a favor and never ever ignore red flags. It's a f ton better to be by yourself than to accept someone subpar to share your life, as they will eventually ruin it some way or another. It's been three and a half weeks since D-Day. Sometimes I feel okay. Sometimes I feel hope. But today life just seems so exhaustive. It's one problem after another. Divorce, kids, money, rent. Then people say I should take some time off for myself. How I would do that. I am not even sure I would enjoy being alone. And I can't stop working because now I need a lot more money to cover everything. Everything seems overwhelming. I wanted a break from everything. And I couldn't even sleep because my mind won't turn off even though I am tired as f. I am doing therapy. I had a session yesterday. Taking time off is impossible right now. And will be like that for the next two years until I pay out all debt I have. I will take a look at that book. I just don't want to keep that cheating episode hammering on my head every day. I wish I could just pretend nothing happened and move on. Don't want to feed a hate for her either as we have two kids. 
26 days post D-Day. I forced myself into a date with a woman I met on Tinder. What a mess. I did not want to be there. I couldn't stop thinking about my ex, my kids, and how we had such a comfy life and she just threw it out the window. Felt tired of this game of having to meet someone, try to know them a bit, building trust, etc. And then for what? So they can cheat on me after 14 years. If that, will I ever be able to date again? Thinking about deleting my social accounts. A month ago, she was mad at me, said bad things, and valued the AP over what we had. I proceeded with a divorce. I am slowly moving out. I work from home, so this week I could finally move my office to my new place, so at least I could spend the day out of the house. She's acting very sad, saying she still has feelings for me. She cries a lot, but at the same time she doesn't let go of a pee. She says she doesn't want to be alone again. She says I left her alone too much during our relationship. She says she would only let go of a pee if I say I'd stay, but I don't know if I want to anymore. I feel bad when I see she's suffering. She's the mother of my kids, so even if we are not romantically involved anymore, I still want her to be happy. Today I have a friend's birthday party to go, so I grabbed some clothes and I will sleep at my new place. Meaning I won't see my kids coming back from school, nor purr them to sleep, nor be there to make their breakfast. I feel crushed, like, I didn't want any of this, and now everyone is sad, even her. What the F? I am not sure I can get back to her, not sure I can trust her again. At the same time I don't feel excited to go single again and I definitely will miss seeing my kids every day. Did anyone that tried reconciliation actually got to a happy place? It seems all reconciliation stories end up bad. I am betting I would be better off away from her, but all the context still hurts so bad. I miss my kids. I miss cuddling. I miss talking to someone about our intimacy. I miss doing plans for the future. Everything seems so flat out boring right now. Why life has to be so hard? I've been cheated, lied, gaslight etc. As many as you on this sub. Because of the help of this sub, I discovered a bit about narcissism, and started reading about it. Even read the DSM-5 definition for narcissistic personality disorder. Turns out most people on NPD don't get a diagnosis because they never seek out therapy. Help for that issue, as they never notice they have an issue for this, so it's pretty much impossible to get your ex-partner to get a diagnosis. So, I started linking a lot of events on my past 14 years to my ex, and noticed a lot of behaviors that she exhibited are described by NPD. And also my self-development over those past 14 years resonates with the development of people that suffered from narcissistic abuse. At the same time that I find I have some backing evidence that I should go grey rock with my ex, I still feel I may be exaggerating and it's not the right thing for me to be this bad with her. As more time passes, I only realize how I was into an abusive relationship, wondering if anyone else has gone through this after breakup and what did you do about it. Cheating ex-wife wants a second chance. I am still sad about the kids and how everything ended. I wasn't chasing that. But I've started thinking on to maybe try reconciliation. I am really not sure we can rebuild trust though. She lied to me multiple times. She says she regrets what she did. But that's just more words coming from a source I don't trust right now. I miss seeing my kids every day and I'd love to have a good life with the mother of my kids. I've read couple posts here that shows how unlikely reconciliation is, and the lies that cheaters tell to just regain their comfy life back without actually putting any effort into making any changes. So this makes me wonder if I would just be postponing the inevitable, and probably making me go through the same crap show of emotions again. Help. Divorce is almost done. Even though this is what I want, I feel defeated. It's like I had to choose between two bad outcomes, either divorce someone I loved, or stay with someone I don't trust. I miss cuddling, I miss talking deeply to someone, I miss being in a relationship, yet I think I would never find someone again, because I'm not even sure I can trust someone new. After all, the person I trusted most in my life stabbed me in the back with zero remorse. Better get used to being alone. Does it get better? Why do we have to go through this? Wayward wife finally signed our divorce papers after making me go through hell a thousand times with cheating, gaslighting, and demanding all sorts of stuff as she felt entitled to be adored for her selfish childish stupid behavior. Oh boy, I feel like I got a bit more freedom. Leave a cheater, gain a life. Let's cherish life, loyalty and what's good. May we let go of the damage that has been done to us. Thank you everyone in this sub for helping me go through this and see the light. It's going to be one year since D-Day and two weeks. The first three months or so were really rough. 
I had a lot going on in my head. I wasn't entirely sure if I should try reconciliation or just part ways. I went back to therapy as soon as I found out about the infidelity. Therapy helped a lot to make my thought process more clear and to have an unbiased opinion on what was happening. About three months and we signed the divorce papers. It was really difficult to get her signature. I had to let go of a lot of things, but I just wanted to feel free from her. I moved to an apartment and adopted a cat. It was really refreshing to be alone at home. I could do whatever I want, no questions asked. It made me slowly realize how abusive my relationship with her was. Later I moved to a house at the end of a street in a very calm place. My kids absolutely love it. They can play outside, which they never could on the previous house, where she lives now, and the apartment I was. It feels so good to live here. I work from home, so being calm is awesome to make little stops from work and just appreciate the view. The cat I adopted has almost become part of me. He's by my side most of the time. He's sleeping next to me right now, and he helped me a lot on crying days. My ex never just settled down and started acting like an adult. She's always trying to fight, using the kids as an exchange coin, etc. I am 100% sure she's a narc, and I absolutely had to step away to see it. I finally went as much no contact as I could a few months ago, blocked her and her fakes everywhere. We only talk through text messages because kids, but I ignore all attempts of her trying to change the subject and I use an attorney when she starts denying info about the kids. It's been a rough road. I am still dealing with trauma. I still barely trust anyone else. Although I've met some truly nice people during this time, I also met some people that are just as nuts as my ex. I am glad I have this background now so I can keep my distance from those. Although it's still not super easy, my life has improved a lot since the breakup. I really enjoy my own company, and even being a solo dad has been easier than when I shared a house with her. My kids are doing absolutely fine and they understand that they have two homes now. They said they missed the family as it was a couple of times, and that broke my heart each time, but I offer all the support I can at my home with them, and they notice it. They love being with me, and it's been months now that they don't even bring that old family up anymore. I can't say I fully regret that relationship because of my kids, but I can tell you that my life has been a lot better since I left her. Thank you everyone in this sub. I posted a few times when I found out and I always had very helpful comments. Life does get better. OP, as the saying suggests, individuals enter our lives with purpose. In your situation, it was for the sake of the kids. Some remain for a lifetime, while others are only there for a brief period. Your ex's time in your life has now reached its conclusion. Keep on healing, living your life, and finding happiness. I commend you for being the stable parent and setting an example for your children by not staying in an abusive relationship. Stay resilient, as you've made significant progress. My best wishes are with you and stay strong. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you really like my videos then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Have a good day.